Right, so the last last couple of weeks have done a bit on water colours. Um, first week I was doing like flat washes and then graded washes, going off dark to light. And then last week was wet and wet, sort of putting some wet water colour down, putting other colours into it. So we did the sunset type images. I was thinking this might be quite a good image um, where we're chance to paint some landscape and a few different things to practice out the techniques so far already. So I've picked an image that I thought isn't is quite a nice and interesting little image, but it's not over complicated. So I've got some copies of this. Um, the other image I've got is um, this one here, which again I've used for watercolour projects. And again, it's not over complicated. Ooh, quite a lot of this will translate to either flat and flat washes or slightly graded washes, or wet and wet here, perhaps start with a sandy colour. Um, talking to a couple of people took this one on this morning, and I think the most difficult bit of this one was this blue bit here, yeah. because it cuts around a lot of object. So what I was suggesting was perhaps if you if you do choose this one, perhaps turn it on its side when you're doing that bit and just kind of work your way down through there. I think is an easier way of painting it than trying to do it that way. So just a quick tip if anybody chooses that. Uh, so this one is a photo I took of some pictures on the wall in Brattlewell quite a few years ago. And I believe it's the oldest church in Britain. Um, so it's quite, I think it's about 500 AD or something like that. So it's quite 648. Is it right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to be precise. Yeah, so that's that. So it's a, yeah, quite a nice photo there. And so in terms of painting this, the, for me the, well, which bit do you think, would you say is the lightest bit here? The sky. You think the sky? Yeah, I think probably this is, yeah. I think this is slightly lighter. It's, it's actually straw or grasses. Mm, I think it's gosh. just a fraction lighter. Um, one thing you can do, I, I, the bit I found hard was this bit here. And I thought this was lighter than this, but it turns out it's the other way around. Um, mm -hmm. If you photo, you know, what your image, and then look at it in black and white. So on, on, a, on a phone, you can quite often just find a filter, a black and white filter. And that's quite a good way of being able to see the relative tones. Because if you translate it into black and white, you're just seeing lights and darks. Mm -hmm. So that, that can, yeah, can be quite a good thing to do. I'm usually pretty good at fixing the tone, but sometimes, because like, that's quite a warm colour, there's a lot of light, warm light bouncing off that, that seems to me lighter, but when you look at it black and white, that is a tiny bit darker than that. Um, in terms of painting this, the way I would, would suggest going about this is go with the lightest bits first. Um, this is one I've got a couple of stages on from. So I, I tend to go with these light sort of straw colours here, and I've just really use something a bit like either yellow ochre or raw sienna. Um, maybe the tiniest bit of red in with it. Because down here it's a little bit pinky, pinky browny. Um, and just get plenty of colour mixed up ready. And um, just want to keep that quite light. I think that's probably going to be dark enough. It, it's going to. Um, it will look dry slightly lighter, but that's that's how it's come out on, on this one. So just want it just to just work that in like that. Um, keeping that whole area quite wet. And I also painted this pinky colour at the same time. So I basically just let all that get wet because if that colour would be fine underneath the green. And then mix a slightly browny mix on for this for the path. So I've got a bit of brown there and just a tiny bit of red into that. And that to me is slightly darker. And it doesn't really matter if that just bleeds into that a little bit. Um, so I did that bit and let that dry. Um, to paint the sky, sorry, I'm going to paint that upside down just because I think it will be easier and also it will just run straight off if I do like that. Turn that upside down. <coughs> um, did you, Paul, did you just pencil drawing? Yes, I have. Pencil, pencil drawing, drawing first. Yeah. yeah. 
What I actually did was I did one drawing and then I scanned it to my computer and then I just printed it off on the towards <laughs> colour paper for a time. Save me keep drawing it. The thing, what I could say actually is a bit about the drawing. Um, I'll do a little bit on the back of one of these. Yeah, I should have said that first, actually. So in drawing the the church itself, um, I find sign a pencil. So it, it certainly helps having your picture and your your paper on the same plane. And if when you when you're drawing, you don't really want it flat on the table. You want to have quite a square on to you. So if I'm sitting at the table, quite often I'll, I'll sit here and I'll just have it resting on the edge here, not to my knee, so it's only drawing square on. That's the best way. Um, it's hard to judge angles when you've got it stretched out in front of you. So probably start with maybe one side, or you could, what, what I, I tend to do is like just pop the line down the middle, like a guideline that I can rub out afterwards. And that way, I can get one side in, um, and then I can just measure off and just make sure I've got the same sort of width on the other side. And then get this side, this might be just a tiny, tiny bit higher here, or just draw it level, wouldn't matter too much. And then you've then got point two to join up a little bit. When it comes to drawing the roof, that, the ridge, is a bit of an angle going that way. So again, pop your pencil against the line, you know, it helps to see that and a, an angle. So that will come down very slightly like that. This bit here, again, is just a tiny bit of angle, just about noticeable. But there'll be a little bit of an angle just going down there. And it's not good. Yeah, just going down like that. And then you can then just pop that down like that. Um, and then Planning that out. Perhaps a few marks where you want to start and finish on either side. And then get that. The top of that to me was just slightly below these points, so that helps with that. And then the rest is just sort of seeing how far up the bushes come up, roughly how far the horizon is. But the subject of that, I tend to start with the building and then work my way around to the more organic bits. Here. So that, that's the drawing bit, which I probably should have shown you. So, uh, right, so that's the one I started with. Go back to that. Um, painting the sky, just get a, a, I mean, you could paint it just flat like that, that's fine. Or if you wanted to make it a, a livelier sky with some clouds or a little bit of variation. Uh, I think the one I did this morning, I made the colours slightly warmer at the bottom, a little bit pinky yellow perhaps. Um, so I'll add a little bit, I'll make this slightly different to it this morning, so I'll add a bit of pink to that. Sometimes you find that the colours in the horizon are a bit warmer, a bit more pinky yellow, and then you'll get a stronger blue as you're coming, going up into the sky. So I'll start with that, it's more just there really. And then go into the blue. So I've got some hot blue, a bit of blue, pink in. That's probably a bit too strong. So I'm just that out. So we'll work around the the church itself with that. And then to get the, the resting quickly, I, I tend to use my bigger brush then. And that way I can get a wash on nice and quickly and there's a better chance of getting a flat wash. And it's mixing, as you can see, mixing plenty of paint. I want to have more than enough. I don't want to run out. And another, another thing, you, if you wanted to vary the sky a little bit, say you wanted a few clouds in, you could either leave little gaps of white paper, and um, that's one, one technique. I'm not great at doing that. I think um, 
I think if you've got a rougher paper, that works quite well. You can, with a dry brush, so you, if you wash your brush, and then just dry it out on a rag or some kitchen roll, you can, while it's still wet, you can lift certain amounts out. So I've picked up some blue, so I now need to wash that out again. And just get clean, just get that really clean. And I can pick a bit more out, like that. So I could get, lift off some clouds that way. And I could do exactly the same with a bigger brush if I wanted, if I wanted to remove larger areas, should be able to do that. But you can only really do that when it's wet, it needs to be wet, and you don't want to introduce water to it, there's a much slight amount there, so it's important to have the brush dry, it's kind of like a damp brush, a brush that's sort of just wanting to suck some moisture up, so I usually have it wet then dry it, and then it's damp enough to lift so that's kind of that stage. <laughs> I'm not used to painting this side. So <laughs> this so you can see. Right, so here. Um, from there, oh, I'm gonna, yeah, you could then sort of paint some. Yeah, this this one here I've got as an example. I basically painted the whole of the building this pinky colour, pinky grey. So that would go like that, let that dry, and then put these shadow colours on. Let's perhaps put the, the root colour. And these bits here, I'll have to sort of cut in back with the green. And it, it would be the same with the with the water here, actually. So that's a little bit more tricky. So let's just try and kind of brush it, not too very thin. I'll use those two. Um, so for the water, I would want that a little bit stronger than I've got this colour. Not too blue, slightly stronger blue. And then just really kind of cutting back in a little bit like that. So I've got a rougher edge. Again, you could do that upside down if it was easier. Um, and then I'd need that just as a bigger brush or wash part, but that's too dark. I'll line that quickly. Yeah, that's kind of a bit too dark, I can't really show it there. But um, just kind of cutting in like that to get the impression of the, the grasses. So what, what they call negative, painting in negative. So you could, rather than paint the straw, you're painting around the, the grasses and the straw. Do the same around here, but with the green here. Mm -hmm. Then these foreground bits, just make those a tiny bit darker. So that's so. Uh, in a way, the other one might be a little bit easier. I'm not sure really. There's a bit more texture in this one. But anyway, I've got copies of either if you want to. Mm -hmm. If you want to, but if you want to do something completely different, that's absolutely fine. Um, next week, the last week of watercolors. What I thought I'd perhaps do is just maybe. Do some little paintings of still life objects. So the, the project for April was still life. If you wanted to do that, um, so I was just thinking maybe practice with some individual objects, or like like an apple or an orange, or half of an apple, same as all mushroom. Just different, just anything that you can think of. Or your paint boxes and your mugs and just anything that we've got around. Um, just quite nice to practice watercolour, but in relation to other other things. So that's the idea. That's what I'll demonstrate next week anyway, and then you can choose what you're going to do. Yeah. If, yep. you, if you're just starting out with watercolour, yeah. yep. um, is it easier to do scenery rather than people, like a portrait? Yeah, I think so. That, yeah, I don't think a portrait would be very easy. I wouldn't want to start with a portrait. You don't see many. Um, no, 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 I think it's, I think I've never, I'm have never. i not really, I, I do little sketches of people with watercolour, but they're not yeah. really portraits as such, portrait. yeah, um, okay. yeah, I think quite a challenge of portrait, I would, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try um, as simple as possible, <laughs> I'd say with watercolour, as simple as seeing as possible, and then just build your skills up, you know, do, I, I, my, my suggestion is lots of quick exercises, you can do two or three in an afternoon, that's the ideal. You know, and just keep them 
if you go even simpler for this, that'd be good. Yeah. I think that's the best way to, to build up your experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Before you start, yeah. Yep. Very quickly.